Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this webinar today on Babanango Game Reserve. Today I have Anna joining me, one of my colleagues. I'm Jesse, by the Hello. way. Um, we'll give everyone just a few seconds. Uh, gee, I started at three o'clock on the dot, so I'll just let everyone download. I know it takes a second to open the webinar platform, so um, enjoy the beautiful scenery of Babanango Game Reserve. We'll just give everyone uh, a few seconds to join. Okay, 301 about a minute for everyone to, to join in. Um, again, my name's Jesse. Welcome to the webinar today. You're um, seeing Anna here and our other colleague, Jenna, being sneaky. She's playing uh, the Wizard of Oz. She's the man behind the curtain right now. Um, she's making, making sure everything runs smoothly on the back end. Um, so Jenna might or might not pop in at the end, but we'll see if we can um, make her come out from behind the curtain. Um, my name's Jesse. Here is um, our contact information for both Anna and myself. The entire Emerging Destinations team had the pleasure of heading to Babanango Game Reserve ju just in the past two months. So they're a new client of ours that we're really, really excited about. Um, we're excited to be growing our portfolio in general. But um, really funny, quick story. When uh, Anna and myself traveled to Babanango first and we found these really cool hats at um, but at Babanango Valley Lodge and we were like oh cool we have to buy these hats so of course we're taking these beautiful sunset pictures in these hats and then when Jane and Jenna um, went a couple weeks after us they also bought the same hat so now the whole Emerging Destinations team has these um, safari hats the next time we get together we'll have to take um, a picture but anyway I wanted to put up our email addresses please reach out to us what I'm going to do in this webinar is this is more of a discussion. This is just a trip recap and Bob and Ango through Anna and myself um, through our eyes, essentially. I'll actually be traveling with Seams Bruger, the new sales and marketing manager for Bob and Ango Game Reserve. I'll be traveling with him next week. Um, so we'll leave the formal um, and product immersion stuff to him. But um, the whole intention of this webinar is to tease you with our with our pretty pictures, um, the activities that we were able to experience. Um, I've added some from from um, Jane and Jenna as well as our trips were just quite a little bit different. Um, but this is just meant to be fun. Please ask us questions. This is not formal. I just would love for this to be more of a discussion. Um, Anna's got her uh, got her eye on the questions box. Um, she'll raise her hand, we'll play Jeopardy or whatever when a question comes in. So um, we wanna make sure we get to your questions. But again, I'll send out a webinar invite when we have scenes do something much more in depth, uh, but this is just meant to be fun. I have, um, it's happy hour in my office. I've just grabbed a, a seltzer. So please, this will just be more lighthearted than our product immersion webinars. Um, it wouldn't be an Emerging Destinations webinar if I didn't introduce you to the rest of our portfolio. So we're happy to have Bob and Ango join us, but we are still um, representing um, the Elowana Collection, Sopa Lodges, and Sky Safari in Kenya, Tanzania. We've got Eco Training in South Africa, Adventure Consults in Uganda, Rwanda, Pax More if you need anything in Greece. Um, Hotel Eastland, Iceland Pro Cruises, and Iceland Pro Travel all in Iceland, and then Iceland Pro Cruises and Iceland Pro Travel also can assist in Greenland. Um, Canyon Madness Ranch out in New Mexico if you'd like to venture out west. Grand Hotels Lux in um, Argentina and Uruguay, Las Torres in Patagonia, Enchanted Expeditions in Ecuador and the Galapagos, Travel Pioneers in um, Central America, Colombian Journeys and Chile Concept, um, you guys can figure out where, where they're based. So we have a really lovely portfolio. Um, of course, today we'll be focusing on Babanango Game Reserve, but please feel free to reach out to us with any of our um, other products. So um, welcome to Babanango Game Reserve. Anna, I know that you, um, you and I have both been to um, mostly Eastern Africa. I've also been to um, South Africa as well, but this landscape, was like nothing I've ever seen before. You know, I think we all kind of get in our little um, safari ruts and we just kind of are thinking bush, bush, bush. But this, the the scenery here and the landscape here was just absolutely mind boggling to me. Um, Babanango Game Reserve is 22,000 hectares. That's about 54,000 um, acres. So absolutely massive with only three properties, four properties, um, if you count our more educational um, property 
um, all within 56,000 acres. So a really great place to recommend for your guests that are wanting maybe more of a private exclusive safari. They don't want to see another vehicle. They want to, you know, really feel like they're out in the wilderness by themselves. Um, we can truly offer that um, at Babanongo Game Reserve. I'll go into our helicopter here in just a second, but I was staring at this picture earlier. You guys see the helicopter here. Lunch is set up here and there's two people right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So just to give you a, an idea of the vastness and the magnitude of this area, super cool. So, um, Anna, I don't know about you, I really enjoyed hearing the story of where Babanango came from because it's kind of a goofy, a goofy word. I'm like, it has to mean something. Is it a name of the people? Is it a, you know, um, a plant? What is, what is this uh, weird word? And the story is actually kind of cool. Um, there's two different kind of versions um, mm -hmm. of the story, but they're both quite similar. So Babanango essentially means father, there it is. And the whole story goes to say, or starts as, it's um, a father and a son who are looking after their cattle in, in the Babanango Valley area. And um, they are heading in for the night after grazing their cattle and they're missing one of their, um, their cattle. So they go into one of the tall um, rocks or just to get, a, to, to get a good view of the area to see if they can find this lost cow. And the, the son calls out to his father, Babanango, which means father, there it is. So essentially they found the cow. Did I miss anything, Anna? You you got the same no. the same story? Yeah, you did perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so really, really interesting. That's just kind of the story um, and the history here. And just mentioning the history in general. You guys, um, I'll show you on the map here. So we're in KwaZulu, KwaZulu Natal, and it's essentially one of the newest game reserves. You know, we're putting up the last little bit of our fence. Um, so we are KwaZulu Natal's um newest game reserve, I guess you could say. So that's quite exciting. Um, you're looking at the map here and you can see Durban. I know a lot of you are maybe asking where the heck we are and how do we even get there. We're about three hours north um, of Durban, of course, in the Babanango Valley area, but not too far of a drive. Um, it was raining when, when Anna and I went, so I think it took us a little bit longer. It was absolutely pouring, um, so about three hours, but two, two and a half, three hours would be an average amount of time just to get out to us. Okay, um, I just wanted to torture you with some more photos. Again, like I said, I know that we kind of, at least in my mind, I'm just, you know, bush, 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 game, game, game. You know, you get this landscape in your mind, but we have um, several, I think this is really interesting, several different species of aloe on the mm -hmm. reserve, which is quite fascinating. You're driving all around um, and they're just, I think there's three to five different species of aloe. I can't remember, Anna. Um, that are throughout the reserve. And I told everyone, <laughs> we haven't introduced our elephants quite yet, but I think the Ellie's are gonna go crazy for this stuff. I mean, it's everywhere. Um, I know that they're gonna have, have some fun with that. But anyway, um, when we were there with um, Jeff, the COO of the reserve, he was just telling us how Bob and Ongo intends to offer some really cool wellness retreats um, with the, with the aloe and maybe like some yoga retreats, some aloe workshops or whatever. And I know that sounds kind of out there, but there is a, there is a tourism product for it. Um, so I I just thought it was quite fascinating, all the different, um, the aloe species. And again, I just, I'll keep saying crops, these beautiful, it's completely diverse and different from Valley Lodge to Zulu Rock Lodge. And I know you don't know what I'm talking about quite yet. I'll introduce you to the lodges in a moment, but I just keep mentioning the landscape. It really was like nothing I personally um, have ever seen. Um, okay, so we'll start at um, Zulu Rock and feel free to type through your questions. I know that we, um, oh, I see Anna raising your hand at me. Do we have a, a question or would you like to chime in? <laughs> No, we don't have a question yet, but uh, I wanted to highlight two things about the Banango Game Reserve. The first one, when when you show the map, is that uh, reinforce the idea that the Banango Game Reserve is located in a malaria-free area. So this is a oh. great, unique selling point when thinking about um, a trip, a safari trip to South Africa. So this is great. I'm not sure, Jesse, if you want to share with with our attendees uh, how Babanango uh, was uh, how Babanango started and and 
a bit about African Habitat Conservancy and what they what they are doing and what's what's the the main uh, focus of the Banango Game Reserve and what's this project about. Good point, Anna. So. Um... African, sorry, Babanango Game Reserve is an African Habitat Conservancy project. If you guys are interested in just kind of really, really diving in, you can head over to AfricanHabitatConservancy.com. Essentially what they've done, um, they, their, their whole plan is to um, reintroduce uh, or re reclaim um, the areas for game reserves. So if any of you on the line are familiar with Shamwari, this is essentially like the same thing just in working with the locals. There's, I think it's 11 plots of farmland, right, Anna? It's 11 mm -hmm. plots of farmland which make up the 56,000 acres that they're reclaiming and reintroducing all of this game that essentially was um, poached, poached out um, years and years ago. So, of, of course, hopefully all of you on the line know how um, a game reserve works, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, the releasing of the animals and all the game that will be on Babanango Game Reserve. But yeah, African Habitat Conservancy, this is one of their projects where they're working with the surrounding villages, surrounding locals. Um, everyone's happy, everyone agrees. We put up the, the fencing and we're just building essentially this, this brand new um, game reserve. If you want to comment any more on that, Anna. No, I just wanted that. They started with the project four years ago, and this is the first project of African Habitat Conservancy. They have more projects on the books that they will be developing, and it's uh, it's great. And at least for me, that I I haven't been too many times as you to to Africa. Uh, it was in in comparison with other countries or other regions that I visited two years ago before the pandemic. It was great just to not to compare, but to see the difference when you visit a game reserve that was there forever. And in comparison with this one, it's like you are being part of the foundation of this game reserve. So all the process, all the sort of a startup is really amazing, fascinating. And this is one of the things that you or your travelers can enjoy in this upcoming month or years. They will be uh, sort of involve or much more uh, link with the origins and with, with the with the startup of this game reserve. Yeah, exactly. Well said, Anna. So you know, we'll we'll talk about the the game release in a in a, in a little bit and how the, our 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 plans for Big Five. But just for your guests that maybe have been on Safari multiple times and are really looking for like an immersive, unique. Um, I mean, we, uh, I won't spoil it, but Anna and I got to witness a release of an animal that we'll, we'll show you in just a moment. But I mean, I was beside myself. I almost cried and it sounds so silly, but it's just interesting. Um, so a really great option right now for your guests that are maybe looking for a more immersive and unique experience. Obviously will be big five by, by um, May of 2022. Um, mm -hmm. So that is coming, but right now it's just really something special um, working from the ground up. So, mm -hmm. yeah, let's go to um, Zulu Rock Lodge. Um, this wasn't our room, but Anna and I got to snuggle up. We had a, a twin room, so it was quite nice just to um, to see one of the, the options. All rooms can be either um, double or twin, just for your information, but there are seven units, um, mm -hmm. and they are in the Babanango Valley, obviously, but overlooking the, um, the this particular valley would be the Umpolozi Valley. Um, I love that the decor is just quite simplistic, but still authentic, if that makes any sense. Um, I thought the room were, 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 the rooms were super, super cozy. This is par in particular our um, honeymoon suite or romance suite. Um, we don't wanna deter any non-honeymooners. Um, of course, you can stay in our, in our romance suite, um, but there is a wonderful fireplace um, that they'll set for you when you come back. We had warm water bottles. Anna and myself went in a cooler time. Jenna and Jane, I think, would have died if they um, lit the fireplace. It was so <laughs> hot. But, um, anyhow, you can see the clouds in the in the distance here, just you know, over overlooking the valley. I just um, again, I'm going to talk about the landscape this entire time. But beautiful, spacious rooms. All of them have um, a wonderful porch. The honeymoon suite has this cool little swing over here and a private plunge pool. Otherwise, there is um, excuse me a um, common area pool. What's up, Anna? 
Yes, and we have a, among the seven independent uni units, we have the romance room and we have also a family room that also has a planche pool on the terrace, a private planche pool. Just like what you're looking at here. Yeah, it would be similar, similar to this. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so really, really great for honeymooners romance. Again, um, I think I think we all use the term, you know, honeymoon suite, honeymoon suite, but it could be a, you know, a, a getaway, just a romance suite. Who has to say you're on a honeymoon or on an anniversary? Doesn't matter. Um, I personally, this was like my dream come true. This is exactly what I want my living room to look like. So I part, I took a lot of pictures of the inside of here. Um, I know that the sometimes it doesn't matter what the inside looks like. It's about the the game and the staff and the experience. But I was just absolutely in love with the the inside of the the um, Zulu Rock Lodge. Wonderful fire pit area here. They light this every evening, um, and it, of course it overlooks the valley. So the stars and the moon. Oh. I just this is where I was every night with the with a glass of wine. Um, and then this is the the living area, I or the living area, common area, whatever you would call it. And I just was really I love these canvas prints. And again, it's all overlooking out into the valley. So I was just quite fond of the the aesthetics here. Um, a unique selling point and a unique activity, I guess. Um, Zulu Rock. It's not the biggest wine cellar, but there is a wine cellar, and it has um, a plethora of different wines. If you have romance travelers, you can set up a nice dinner in here, wine tasting, happy hour, um, whatever you'd like. But it's kind of built around. Um, the, you can't see here to the to the left, but there's some beautiful rocks, and it's really intimate. Um, so it would be a really nice dinner or happy hour or just. Um, intimate experience for any any type of um, traveler that we can arrange for you. Um, and of course, an extended uh, wine list here at Zulu Rock. Um, another one of my photos, um, I texted my husband while I was here and I asked him, I was like, can we please find who sells this wallpaper? Because <laughs> I, I absolutely loved it. This is just the common area bathroom, just showing you the quirkiness and the uniqueness um, of just the property. Of course, we'll jump into the activities, but it was a really, really unique um, feel. Anna, do you want to comment on any of your, um, any comments about the, the lodge before we jump into the activities? Well, I loved that wall, wallpaper and also all the glass um, walls mm -hmm. that you have on the, on the, on the WC area. <laughs> which was really amazing because you had a great view. <laughs> great, uh, what is it, a, a loo with a view. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's funny. Yeah, I, the lodge is just something special. Um, mm -hmm. We got to go um, on several different um, game drives. This is Jeff here that you see. I think he looks looks like he belongs, I don't know, what would you say, Anna? Like, he looks like he should go play croquet or something. Like, he doesn't look like he should be driving this <laughs> vehicle. Um, anyway, this is the the CEO of the, the reserve that took us out on some really wonderful um, um, game drives. You can see the open vehicles. We did have the flaps down. It was a little bit chilly again when we were there, but um, beautiful, beautiful views, beautiful game drives um, throughout the area. Um, while we were at uh, Zulu Rock, um, we were able to witness a, um, a game release and uh, just to mention, if you have guests staying here, or any guests for that matter, um, who up until, you know, we are fully stocked, um, quote unquote, we're releasing animals daily. So it was so funny, Anna and I were out on horses, and we got a call that they were going to be releasing some giraffe at the other end of the reserve. Would you be interested in viewing that? And Anna and I looked at each other and we're like, is that even a question? <laughs> Duh. Um, so this was quite fun. We literally, it was like Uber. We got picked up by the helicopter on the <laughs> reserve, swept over to the other side of the um, other side of the game reserve, and we got to witness four, six giraffe that had just um, had a long, long journey being transferred to this release area that they'll be releasing all their animals. Um, so we got to witness that. I know the video is going to be choppy. It's from my cell phone, so I apologize. But I did just want to at least show you. It's very short. Oh. 
very short, very sweet. Uh, but I was just very touched. It was just they they you know it was it was quite short. You know, um, it happened so quickly. They had a long journey. They stepped out, took a look around, and ran off into their new home. So again, that's happening daily here. Um, I don't know. I don't recall if um, Jenna or Jane. Jenna, if you want to pop in, you're more than welcome to. I don't remember if you guys were able to um, see anything released, but daily, they're B Buffalo. I think that they, um, what did we get, a group text um, that they had tried to get Buffalo from one of the neighboring um, reserves or farms or wherever they're getting them from, and they couldn't catch them. So no Buffalo that day. We'll try again tomorrow. Um, but they're releasing things um, daily, which is really, really cool. So, yep. Yes, we have a question regarding the rooms before we continue with the activities at Zulu Rock. And uh, uh, Melanie is asking about the picture that you show about the room at Zulu Rock. It seems that we there's no privacy with the with the bathroom. How does it work when people is sharing the room? Can you not that that was the honeymoon suite? Sorry if I can just pop in or the romance suite that that photo was up. Yes, and there's the man behind the curtain. I knew she'd come out. So um, <laughs> yeah, this, this in particular is our this is our honeymoon suite right here. But um, Anna and I, unfortunately, we're not in the honeymoon suite. So, <laughs> but it lo it looks identi identical to this. So you are correct, Melanie. Here's the shower back here, and then the bathtub right here. The bathroom, the actual toilet, does have a door and a lock. So you are completely um, private in your doing your duties um but yes the shower is exposed the 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 ba uh, bathtub over here is exposed and you have just your little living area and your um fireplace so yes it's quite open but the actual toilet has a door with a lock okay thank you Jesse. yep and so so essentially the the regular suites the non-romance suites just don't picture this pool right here. It still has the fireplace, this living area, this beautiful deck, no swing. Um, I don't know why they don't have a swing in every room. It sounds quite fun, doesn't it? But anyhow, all of them are identical except for this private plunge pool and um, loungers. And you have an actual door on the bathroom and all of the other suites. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay, yeah. thanks, Anna. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> Obviously, one of you stayed in the honeymoon suite. Anna and I did not, so apologies. <laughs> More privacy in the romance suite, which is funny. Don't you want to be like a little, you know, uh, intimate in the honeymoon suite? But, you know, <laughs> I digress. So let's get back on track. Um, other activities that Anna and I got to do, this is a particular favorite um, of mine. I don't know about you guys, I never ever drink gin and tonics. I only do when my bum is in on the continent of Africa. I can put them away and I don't know what it is, um, but they had a really, really lovely bar set um, out on the, the, the plains here. And this, the picture that I showed you at the beginning of Anna and myself in our beautiful hats, this is at this location where we had an absolutely incredible sunset just overlooking the valley. But no, no day is complete without sundowners. So of course the staff bring out the works and we had a really, really nice um, sundowner, fire pit, um, nibbles and a, and a bar. So this really was a great, um, a great sundowner spot. Um, I'll move on to Valley Lodge. Anna, do you want to chime in um, about Zulu or Mr. Wizard of Oz? Do you have anything to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, just wanted, just because I, I love uh, eating, I just wanted to, to focus oh, on the on the food and beverages um, options that Sulu Rock offer. They are completely uh, over the top. Five star on the top. Yeah, yeah. The experience, the, the, the staff, the warmth of the staff, the service, the quality of the food, the variety of, of the of the of the meals that they offer daily, it's completely an experience itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really important to mention, people um, remember a bad meal. Um, so obviously mine went in my mouth quicker than I even took a photo of it. Otherwise I would have added so many photos. Um, the presentation was beautiful. The variety I think is so super important. And you know, we've had I just, I think food, I know that you've paid a lot of money to go on a safari, but I truly do think the food 
is a extremely important um, aspect and they really have got it, got it right um, at both Valley and Zulu. They've done that on purpose. I don't remember the history of the chef that's now cooking at, um, at Valley Lodge. Wasn't he like, not a Michelin star, he, some, some, some kind of, um, some kind of advanced award. I don't know. I don't speak food. I just eat it. Anyhow, um, <laughs> there was some, a really, really uh, well-known, I guess, chef in the, in the area that is now um, cooking for us at Valley Lodge. But anyway, both lodges, food, drink, out of this world. I dream about the shepherd's pie that we had, Anna. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it's crazy, but it's so good. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, moving on to um, Valley Lodge. This is just on the, the other side of the reserve. I should have added a map here, but they're, they're quite far from each other. Um, what would you say, Anna? Two, two hour drive, maybe a little bit from more. From Solar Rock to Valley Lodge? Yeah, yeah. Did we? I was about well, to say 45 30 minutes. minutes. 30 minutes. 45, I thought we yeah, 45, 45 minutes approximately. Okay, we were game viewing, um, so Jesse was not paying attention. So anyway, <laughs> um, Valley Lodge is nine suites. Two of them are interleading. There's also a honeymoon slash romance suite here as well. Um, completely different landscape in terms of um, Zulu Rock, whereas you're kind of up and you overlook um, the valley. Mm -hmm. This one kind of the valley's um, in the distance, and I believe I have a photo, but uh, very, very different in terms of everything decor architecture um the the whole thing so this is just one of the um one of the suites again very very simplistic clean fresh i loved it um heated floors in the bathroom giant bathtub yeah. that i unfortunately didn't get to um utilize um here's that honeymoon suite um at at valley lodge so beautiful spacious rooms yep yeah, the honeymoon suite is the only one that has the bathtub or the bathroom open or sort of connected or integrated to the room. The other rooms are completely sort of separated. There's much more privacy between the room and the bathroom. So right Just here because the... people keep asking on 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 the okay. on the chat. I need to be more specific then. So yes, here at Valley Lodge, here's your door to your bathroom with your bathtub, your shower, your sink, everything, closet here. And then the honeymoon suite at Valley, here's the bathtub um, and a more intimate uh, bathroom back here. Okay. And there's tons of pictures, you guys. I can We can share this album. I didn't want to overload in photos, but I can certainly share that. Yeah, and the good thing about the honeymoon suite at Valley Lot is that it's, it is a slightly separated from the other rooms at, at, at the property. So it has a sort of a private terrace where we can set up a dinner or, or, or the chef can come and cook in front of the guests. Can, we can really do some nice setups. And as for families or multi-generational trips, we have two rooms that are interconnected. And then we also have two rooms that they are not interconnected, but they are located in the other side of the property crossing the lobby. Uh, and they can accommodate up to four people each one in the same room. So this is ideal also for maybe for family with a with a, with little kids. Uh, those rooms are ideal. Yeah, great, great point, Anna. Um, again, in our follow up, I'll send tons of more pictures. We have some really great photos of the um, the inside of all the rooms, so you guys can um, get some more details there. Also at Valley Lodge, there's a Boma area, which is one of my favorite things. Um, just in whether it's Eastern or Southern Africa, just a typical barbecue. Um, starting off your night uh, around a fire. And what I really wanna highlight here, I should have included the video, but it's like three minutes long. It was so, so, so special. Um, the, is it the general manager? Z is the general manager, yeah? What was he? I think he's, he's the manager, manager. Yeah. Manager of the of Valley Lodge. I thought he was the manager, oh. hospitality manager, or whatever, it doesn't matter. He's He was present throughout our entire trip. Um, so MZ came out uh, as we were enjoying our, you know, the end of our day. MZ's from, uh, he's a local, he's from one of this, uh, the um, adjacent villages. Um, and he told us a, a really, really cool um, uh, Zulu, was it like a, it wasn't a poem, it was a, 
a, some sort of story that, you know, his mm -hmm. mother told him growing up or something. And it was so, so special. He was so passionate and he memorized every single word. It was like a, a, um, oh, geez, it was, I don't know how to explain it, but it was so special to have him be there. And I wish he could have just stayed and was telling stories. And it was um, the story of an African. He, I'm an African. So it was just really, really cool. Um, and I don't know if you want to comment. I just have a really long yeah. video and I'm just staring at him the whole time. I should have included it. Yes, maybe we can share the video on our follow-up. But the good thing is that it's not an experience that we have there just because we were doing a site inspection or whatever. Mm -hmm. This is something that is happening every time they have a guest there. Uh, they are offering this uh, sort of experience after uh, having dinner below the sky, below the stars. Um, they sit up for the desserts around the fire and someone from the staff come here and start sharing stories about the, the communities and, and, and the African culture. So it's really a very sort of unique and special moment that is being created. Imagine you, you are just with that people learning about their culture just next to the fireplace after two or three glasses of wine and <laughs> with with an amazing sky full of stars. So it's really so, so special. That was something that really stuck out to me. I mean, we did some really, really cool activities, but it was so unexpected. Um, and I think it's really important to hear about the history. I mean, if any of you sell South Africa, you know the, the area that we're in, KwaZulu-Natal. So there's some really, really, it's so rich in history. And again, um, as the reserve is building up, they're still doing, um, uh, uh, I guess, inspections around the entire reserve. And they're looking for, you know, um, artifacts and um, carvings and stuff like that. It's all over this area. So we're really discovering it um, daily. So that's, it's just really interesting. I think it's really important to immerse yourself in where you are, obviously. Um, this is kind of a funny photo. I know it's kind of crooked. I just had the thing that I really loved about this particular trip is we did do some really cool activities and game drives, but they just the time spent at the lodge was just so fun to me. And I haven't played Monopoly since I was like 10. <laughs> just had a really fun game of Monopoly, split a bottle. This is why stuff. you didn't win. I probably look at my glass. Well, it's still full there, but anyway, I think this is when I still had money. <laughs> That did not, did not last very long at all. Anyhow, just um, kind of nostalgic anyhow. Um, another unique selling point that I really, really, really want to harp on, we have our own helicopter. Um, it is based at Valley Lodge, but we can arrange for um, aerial safari at any of the, at wherever you stay. Um, believe it or not, I've gone 31 times around the sun and I've never been in a helicopter. So this was a really cool um, first time experience for me. Um, so we got to go on a helicopter ride and it was, I'm really thankful that we were able to do it and the weather was great because you just got to see Baba Nongo um, from above, which is really special. And Anna sent us a video here again, it was from a cell phone. Sorry, it's choppy, but it's at least a good intro. It's choppy. I know how it comes through, but um, yeah, you, you essentially the we'll talk about unique selling points, and I'm just wrapping up at the end here. But um, we'll talk about unique selling points. But having that helicopter and just being able to see um, game from above, um, helicopter along the river. That first photo that I showed you at the very start of the uh, very start of the webinar with the helicopter on the outcrop and having lunch. I mean, it's truly a unique selling point um, in itself. Um, quickly. Horses, we have horses, um, they are located at Valley Lodge, so we can really um, cater to a wide, uh, I guess, levels of horseback riding. I was kind of embarrassed. I think I held the group back a little bit. I'm a little bit of a grandma on a horse, but anyhow, Anna, if you would like to mention something. <laughs> yes, before you leave the, the helicopter tour, I just wanted to mention that those kind, kind of experiences, such as the helicopter tour, are the ones that are making Babanango Game Reserve unique. 
it's not that you are you or your clients are going to have a, a typical safari trip it's like Babanango Game Reserve want to work on the concept of safari reimagine. So of course we are offering traditional game drives from a vehicle, but what about doing a game drive and seeing the animals from above? So those are the type of activities like the helicopter tour or the heli safari that we are uh, offering and the way that we want to reimagine the way you, you you interact with the, with life, uh, wildlife, and you have the experience. What what a safari is and what should be. So yeah. those are the like the helicopter tour. Those are the kind of experiences that we want to sort of change when thinking about a, a safari or a game drive trip. Yeah, and we'll talk we'll talk about safari reimagined. Um, uh, I have a slide at the at the um, end of the presentation. Um, I have a visitor. I'm just going to let her in really quickly. Jane wants to say hello. Um, sorry, everyone. <laughs> Hi. I didn't know I was coming in. <laughs> we were just talking about um, we'll get to Safari Reimagined, but Jane also had the privilege of visiting Babanango. I can see she's headed out of the office, um, but I just wanted her to say hello to all of our. Yeah, wow, it was such an amazing experience and it's really a privilege to work on a new project like this. I mean, the biggest project in South Africa since apartheid and, and started with and apartheid. I happened to be vegan and the food was great. <laughs> So it's really, really good. Yeah, they were they were really really good with that. So um, it's always something I look on. But I mean, if they feed me meat, I'll eat it. But <laughs> they didn't, so it was great. Yeah. So well, thank you, Jane, okay. for stopping in. I'll see you later. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. We have a question regarding the helicopter tour, Jesse. Uh, yeah. Melanie would like to know if the helicopter tour is part of the rates or does it has an extra cost? Yeah, so um, we're the whole thing. We're we're wanting to do um, all inclusive packaging. Of course, we can be quite flexible. And so, if you show up and you haven't booked the helicopter, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I want to," you know, I want to make sure that I'm, you know, getting the helicopter or, um, you know, wanting to add it on. We have all that that pricing. So, you know, we're wanting to do all inclusive. But um, yeah. Right now, the rates that probably we will be including in the follow-up emails, you will see that they do not include the helicopter tours. They just include two game drives per day. Yeah. But we are working on this uh, Safari Reimagine concept, and we will be developing in the upcoming weeks uh, all-inclusive packages that will include the helicopters already. Exactly, and we'll get. I'm trying to rush here to get to Safari Reimagine because I assume that no one knows what we're um, talking about here. Again, horses at um, Valley Lodge we have, and I'll quickly just go through Matatan. Anna and I only did a site inspection here. This is, I guess, our, um, what would you call it? Just below mid-range, I guess. They have some chalets. Um, they really, really cater towards student groups, uh, more educational, excuse me. And a lot of uh, locals will actually come out um, and stay at Matatan. They have some beautiful chalets, and I was actually quite impressed. I was expecting something much um, much, I guess, lower than this, but they were comfortable. I know that Jenna and Jane actually got to stay the night um, in one of the chalets, and I just thought they looked um, beautiful. Again, we only did the inspection there, but good option for extremely budget, uh, budget conscious people, or again, student groups. Mm -hmm. um, and then speaking of student groups, they have the, the tented accommodation that I'll just show you here. So if any of you offer student, um, university, just more um, uh, school groups like that, we can accommodate, um, shoot, Jenna, do you remember, I'm putting you on the spot here, do you remember how many tents, do you remember, Anna, how many tents there are at Matatan, at least the, the, the... So we... oh, let me see my so notes. There's three, uh... there's three kind of separate camps, if you will, that all make up the bigger area, so it can accommodate up to 220 people between the entire Matatan camp. Yeah, and then you know I didn't I didn't include a picture, but um, if you're doing like student groups, it's you know what two, four, six, eight um, almost people mm -hmm. in a tent. This is just this would be for like I guess the the leader the leaders or whatever. If you want more information on that, just let us know. Um, but like I said, Anna and I only got to do just a lunch here. So um, in the middle of the bush, I'm always so impressed with what they can do. Our little hand washing station. Um, 
our actual setup right on the river. And I was particularly impressed with the food <laughs> array. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. You know, you'd expect to get a sandwich or something out here, but we had a really, really nice um, array. Um, and this is where, I don't know, Anna, was this your first time where you got to try a Savannah Dry? <laughs> yes, it was my first time. <laughs> uh, I mean, I uh, one of my favorite ciders. So anyway, this particular property is right on um, the riverbanks here. Unfortunately, as we're moving around and reintroducing new game, this will actually be a part of the um, reserve for game viewing. So you won't be able to come out on foot here like Anna and I did um, this particular time. So anyway, really, really cool area. And as we were leaving, we saw zebras um, and giraffe greeting us, uh, or I guess bidding us adieu. Yes, Anna. Yes, and just in time, because you are starting to mention animals, um, we have a question from Nancy. What kind of game did you see from the heli? Um, we saw, what did we see from the heli? A lot of We planes. saw giraffe. Giraffe. Zebra. Zebra. Nyala. Um, I don't think we, we didn't spot the rhinos from the, the heli. Um, we actually Not did. Not from the heli, from the vehicle. Mm -hmm, from the vehicle. Um, Jenna, did you, did you guys see anything from above? Ours was more of like a, it was just a quick, it was actually really cold. Um, I definitely needed some more layers. We were only up there for 10 minutes. Well, the whole point of it is to, you know, safari via aerial, um, uh, an aerial safari. Mm. Yes, and yeah, remember um, that the, part, the game oh, reserve is being in stock. So all the animals uh, will be there by May next year. So by May next year will be a hotspot for the big five. So um, the helicopter tour will from the helicopter tour uh, after May 2022, you will be able to see elephants, buffaloes, uh, much more zebras, giraffe. You will be able to see the big five. Yeah, Jenna, you were gonna say? Yeah, sorry about that. So Jane and I actually got to do like a 45 minute um, in the helicopter. So we went around the entire um, perimeter of the reserve. So we basically saw almost every animal um, that was in there on our helicopter. So we got to see the rhinos, the buffalo, um, zebras, and basically almost every type of antelope <laughs> that there is. So it was really cool. Yeah. Jack would like to know if there's actually any white rhino at the game reserve. Any white? Those were white rhino, weren't they? Correct. We saw yeah. There two. There's three of them right now, or we saw three. There's a baby. Two yeah, babies. there's a baby. Two babies. They have like kind of in two separate areas of the reserve, so there's six in total. And again, you guys keep in mind, we're gonna keep reiterating, if you guys book from like January to May next year, we're gonna be releasing cheetah, uh, lion, our elephant herds. Um, if that's something, you know, that your guests are really interested in, you know, I don't know if they have a particular day and time that they're gonna be released, but if that's something that you know your guests would really love to witness, um, I'm sure we can get like a date range um, that we can do that. And so they can uh, potentially be there. I mean, how cool would it be to see a whole herd of elephant? Um, it's just that we're we're trying to essentially we have to stock the reserve for the uh, the cats to eat. Um, you know, you can't just release the, <laughs> release the leopard, the the lion, pride, and the um, the cheetah. So we're essentially we're we're making sure they have enough McDonald's. So we're just stocking it as of right. <laughs> Okay, we'll wrap it up with Travelers Camp, Safari Reimagine, and any more questions, although I know that I think we're building some questions through. Um, Travelers Camp, I mean, I just, I'm so amazed what the people can do in the bush. Um, Travelers Camp will come in May of next year. This is mm -hmm. gonna be our five, can we say six star? I, don't, I know that's not a thing, but this is gonna be our ultra, ultra luxe um uh safari property zulu rock is gonna be what on a four four or five star valley lodge valley lodge is four ish star matatan is more of our student um it's hard to put star ratings on something when we don't have the game quite yet but just in terms of luxury yeah. travelers is an ultra luxe top of the um a property that will be be opening in may of 2022 did you want to say something anna Yes, I would say that Sulu Rock and Bali Lodge are five-star properties. Um, and as uh, Jesse mentioned, uh, Travelers Camp will be 
ultra, ultra luxury. We're talking wine cellar. Um, mm -hmm. I wish they had, I don't have the, the boning of the, the structure here. Every, everyone has a private plunge pool. All of them are on the Umphalozi River. So think hippos, mm -hmm. crocodiles, um, Ellie's coming up to drink. Um, this is just one of our um, sample, I guess our, um, just our little showroom, I guess, if you will. But I mean, I was just absolutely drooling over these. I think they're beautiful. So again, this is, this wouldn't be where the location is obviously, but they're all on the river completely and utterly private. The, the wine cellar will have, um, it's essentially almost like underground and it'll have a great view to the river as well. Anna, if you want to chime in, I just had my mouth on the yeah. floor. <laughs> yes, well, um, Travelers Camp is uh, 12 tents in total. Of course, they will be, they will have as usual, a sort of honeymoon or romance unit and they are building two tents that are connected, interconnected ideal for families and what was fun for Jesse and me when we were doing the site inspection <laughs> is that of course they will have a wine cellar, a, a, a swimming pool, even if each tent has its own plunge pool, but they will have a fitness center which was really amazing for us because I can't imagine someone just you know running on a skinny <laughs> or a skill in a, in a, in a, in South Africa, but it will have um, a fitness center as well. And before leaving to you, Jesse, we have another question regarding the, the game viewing and the safari. Um, do you think that the game stocking will be sufficient numbers to assure sighting on safari? Yes, absolutely. Yes, but also keep in mind the, the um, how many acres there are. So there's 56,000 acres. Um, so at first, when we get our, our numbers up, you might have to work a little bit harder for your game, but they'll be there. Um, and of course, we all know that animals reproduce. Um, so mm -hmm. yes, of course, um, they'll be, it'll be wonderful game viewing. Um, but just keep in mind with the square, square acreage of the area, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you might have to work a little bit harder for your game, but it'll be there 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and Jenna's just reminded me. Just if, for anyone interested in more about um, travelers, this is almost twelve million dollars put into a twelve tent camp. So, just um, do the do the um, math on that. So essentially, I'll I'll breeze through Safari Reimagine, but I really think this is quite cool. Um, you know, I personally and anyone that's been selling safaris, you guys know. When you when you go on safari, I feel like we get in such um, such a ritual or habit, and you wake up, you go on your game drive, you come back, you have your breakfast, you take a nap, you have lunch, you go to the pool, and then you go back on your safari. It, safari starts at 7 a.m. Safari starts at 4 p.m. Sundowners, and you do the same thing, which is great. I obviously don't mind it, but what Babanango is trying to do is reimagine safari. So you come. And you can most certainly do your game drives twice a day, but would you like to take the helicopter and have your lunch on one of the outcrops today? Would you like to go to one of our, um, there's an abandoned copper mine on the property. Would you like to go um, horseback riding? You know, they're just really trying to just offer something completely and utterly um, different. And uh, this photo pops up again, again, would you like to have your lunch in the valley today? We can helicopter you to the other end um, and offer something really special. Um, Anna and myself did not get to go to the abandoned copper mines, but there is an abandoned copper mine um, uh, close to Valley. So just something cool there. Uh, would you like to go hiking today? Would you like to, um, oh, that's a cool photo, sorry, um, with, the, with the copper mines. Um, would you like to um, do a cooking class with our chef? Would you like to do a wine tasting? Do you have any interest in um, seeing something in particular from the helicopter? Just um, really, really trying to look at Safari differently. And Anna, I don't know if you want to chime in on Safari Reimagined. I just thought it was a really cool idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, just something different. So honestly, everything at your fingertips. So you're not just coming, of course, we obviously know you want to see the game. That's what you've come here for. But just do you want to see the game in a completely different way? So, yep. Um, I'll wrap it up with some um, unique selling points. My camera here is um, blocking the first two bullet points. Anna, if you don't mind helping me out, I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, not a problem at all. 
So the first unique selling point is uh, witness a game reserve being built from the ground up. Yeah, so we, we were already, discussing before. We've already reiterated that. So again, this would be a great combo, um, you know, with uh, maybe something in the Kruger. Um, where we are still, you know, building, you're seeing something really unique. If you're in, if your guests are interested in any kind of animal releases, keep in mind this is something really, really special. And we're happy to talk about um, combinations. And, and it, as you can see, Anna and I are quite um, honest. You know, this is something completely new. In uh, come back to us in a couple of years, and you know, we hope to be something similar to like a shamwari. Um, when we were there, they were talking about. Um, this is all potential, but like pangolin uh, protection, pangolin rehabilitation or pangolin breeding um, projects and something stuff to do with the aloe. They've got some really cool stuff in the works. So really, really different. Um, go ahead. Yeah, no, then the, the second unique selling point that we would like to highlight is the different levels of accommodation and something for all budgets. Remember that if you have people traveling on a budget or student groups, we can offer Matatan camp. If you have um, people looking for something four or five stars, Bali Lodge and Sulu Rock are simply amazing. And Travelers Camp for the most um, exclusive or ultra luxury guest. Yeah. So it's, and, and all of them can have the experience of doing a game drive at Babarango Game Reserve. So at the end, it's like all of them will have a great, great experience there. Yeah. Game releases daily, we mentioned. Um, Anna and I were lucky mm -hmm. with the giraffes. Um, you know, again, we'll be releasing our cats in the spring, so who knows? Um, what I personally love, 90% of our staff are locals, so all from the surrounding areas. So we get those great stories from MZ and just really cool, um, just, you know, cultural immersion, which is really, really great. Um, the helicopter for aerial safaris, we already mentioned. The aloe, I keep mentioning, but for some uh -huh. people that are, you know, interested in that, it blooms in June and July. And Anna? Yes, coming back to the to the staff and, and the locals, remember that we have, we will have 12 tents at Travelers Camp. We have nine um, rooms at Valley Lodge and seven units at Sulu Rock. And in total, right now, we have 300 employees working for the Babanango Game Reserve. And this means that we are directly uh, affecting in a good way to 1,500 people. So 1,500 people is, is having a meal at night thanks to, to the work that they are uh, doing with Babanango Game Reserve. So we are really changing a local community life. We are really helping them. And this is also something amazing when you plan a trip that yeah. you know that it's not just for you the benefits is that you are changing someone else's life so i think this is really amazing good point and that's the whole um the whole point of african habitat conservancy as well so you know we don't know what other projects that they'll have but yeah that's more to come um, I think we kind of mentioned the sense of soul of the, of the Zulu people and then saving the, the Zulu land wilderness. We've all kind of um, touched on that. So hopefully we kind of gave you a good gee, um, introduction. Go ahead, Anna. Yes, we have, I think, the last question, which is For sure. uh, really very important from Mary. Are all the staff vaccinated? And yes, the answer is yes. And this is one of the of the a lot of amazing things that African Habitat Conservancy is doing with the local communities. They they bought the vaccines and they brought to the to the game reserve and to the communities and they made sure that every, everyone uh, at, at, at the game reserve was vaccinated, was receiving their vaccination. So we are helping them also with that. Um, so hopefully this gave you a good introduction to Babanango. I know I wanted to keep it short, but my goodness, it's nice to remember and reminisce traveling, um, especially during these times. So uh, if you have any questions, I did put our, um, it's just Jesse or Anna at emergingdestinations.com. We're happy to answer any questions. Jane and Jenna both went as well. The whole team, you can reach out to us. Um, as I mentioned, I'll have Seams come on next week and do maybe just a little more immersion. He knows a lot more to about the area and the, the properties and we'll just will be able to give you a much more in-depth um, uh, webinar. Uh, but we appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for taking a, uh, taking your time. I know we took up a little more time than I thought, but um, hope you enjoyed it. 
Um, this is really exciting for us. Uh, we are happy to be completely honest with you. We know it's something being built from the ground up, so we want to make sure that you're selling it correctly. Um, but it is a really, really great combo. Um, even someone that we were traveling with was going, combining it with Cape Town. So um, but ask us any questions. We're happy to help. Um, Jenna, thanks for jumping on and, and chiming in a little bit. But uh, everyone have a great rest of your day. I'll be sending out this recording if you joined a little bit later, but um, this will be on the Emerging Destinations website. I'll try and get it up tomorrow. And Anna, do you want to close it out? <laughs> no, it's okay. It's uh, We can keep talking about the Babanango Game Reserve for two or three hours more. So uh, <laughs> I think that the best thing is for you to experience Babanango. So please come visit Babanango uh, and send your dates and we will make sure that you experience Babanango Game Reserve. Awesome. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.